So we've now seen one example of a power series, and specifically finding the interval of convergence. Let me show you a couple other examples of similar power series that we can address. So the one we saw earlier was x to the power of k. Now on this next one, there's a subtle difference. Notice that I'm starting when k equals 0. On the last example, I used k equals 1 as the starting point to make that similar to what we've done so far. All the other series we've worked with started at 1. But here I'm going to make a slight transition over to using 0 as the starting point. And for the rest of this material on power series, and then once we get into Taylor and Maclaurin series, the same thing, we're going to use k equals 0 as our starting point. So we can get used to that. That's the one exception. All the other series in this unit we've talked about k starting at 1. It's not a big difference, but it makes for a subtle change. So here's an example of another power series. Notice that again we have x to the power of k, but there's some extra coefficients here. 1 over k plus 1. So when k equals 0, for instance, you would have 1 over 0 plus 1. So 1 times x to the 0, which is 1. Then when k equals 1, you would have 1 half times x. The next term would be 1 third times x squared, and so on. So there's another example of a power series. Unlike the one we did earlier, now there are coefficients to worry about. 1, 1 half, 1 third, 1 fourth, and so on, that can affect the interval of convergence. Here's another example, and this is one that we will work through finding the interval of convergence a bit later. If we take this same coefficient, 1 over k plus 1, but then instead of x to the k, a more general version might look something like this, where we have something like x minus 2 to the k. Or you might see something like x plus 3 to the k, where we have something other than just x to the k. So here, the first term would also be 1, because x minus 2 to the 0 power is 1. And then you would have 1 half times x minus 2, 1 third x minus 2 squared, and so on. So the general form for a power series looks like the series, again, starting at 0. And we'll have some coefficients that we're going to call c sub k. And then x minus a raised to the power of k. So on that first example we saw where we just had x to the k and nothing else, the coefficients c sub k were just 1. And a was 0. So we just had x to the power of k when you simplify. On this example at the top of the page here, the coefficients are 1 over k plus 1. And a is again 0. And then in the second example here, the coefficients are 1 over k plus 1. And a is 2. So this is the general form of all the examples we're going to see. And when we use power series to build what are called Taylor and Maclaurin series, they will also fit this pattern, and we'll talk about specifically, in that case, what the coefficients look like, and so on. So this is called a power series, and there's some interesting terminology here. It's a power series centered at A. So that's a new term we haven't used yet that we can talk about where the center of a power series is. Remember, the main question for a power series is what values of x make this converge? In other words, what's the interval of convergence? And that brings us to what this term centered has to do with. It has to do with where the interval of convergence is centered. Let me give you an example of what I mean. So for example, the one we're going to work out a little bit later, this second example here, 1 over k plus 1 times x minus 2 to the k has an interval of convergence of 1 to 3, which includes 1 but doesn't include 3. So when x is 1 or anything up to but not including 3, this thing converges 
and all other values of x make it diverge. This power series is centered at 2. Notice we know that because there's a 2 right here and in general the power series is centered at whatever the value of a is. But notice the connection to the interval of convergence. The interval of convergence is from 1 to 3 and the center of that interval of convergence is 2. So this is where we get the term a power series centered at a because of the way this process works and specifically the ratio test as we'll see in the next couple examples. Because of the way that works this interval of convergence will always be symmetric around whatever that value of a is depending on what your power series starts out looking like. So you can always tell before you ever start the problem where the interval of convergence is centered. So in this example the interval of convergence if we draw it on a number line is centered at 2, it goes down to 1 and up to 3. It happens to include 1 and not include 3 but it's centered at A. So here's the interval of convergence and earlier I mentioned the term radius of convergence so you may see that here the radius of convergence is the distance from the center to one of the edges. So the radius of convergence is always going to be half the width of the interval of convergence. If you've ever done any statistics and you've learned about confidence intervals and margins of error, this concept is very similar, where you have an interval that describes your answer and then you can talk about the distance from the center out to one edge, which is always just half the width of the full interval. So if you see the term radius of convergence, that's another way of describing how much a series converges like this. If it has a wide radius of convergence, it's pretty generous. If it has a small radius of convergence, there are much tighter tolerances on what values of x it allows for convergence. So notice a few things. First of all, every power series will converge at at least one x value. And that's the center. So any power series you can imagine, if x equals a, it will converge. And look back briefly at this general form. If x equals a, this all goes to zero. And so trivially, your series is just a sum of zeros. So naturally, it converges. So that's kind of a trivial conclusion that every power series converges at its center. Some only converge at the center. And others will converge for some interval. and that interval will be centered at A. Lastly, there are some series that converge for all x values. So in that case, the interval of convergence would be from negative infinity to infinity. That is possible. There are times that power series converge for all values of x. Now after we do a few more examples of finding the interval of convergence, we're going to move into this application I've mentioned of Taylor and Maclaurin series. And the reason this is so significant is because a Taylor series or a Maclaurin series is only valid when it converges. So it's important to know what values of x make a specific power series converge because if you're using a power series for that application, that tells you when your answer is meaningful, when it's valid. So this concept of interval of convergence is the key to a power series in general, and then when we use power series to do something, it's an important piece to that as well.